My name is Peter Foss and I'm the Rector of Christ Episcopal Church in Shaker Heights and I'm excited to announce a brand new outreach ministry that we are offering from this parish and especially courtesy to the, the gifts and talents of Connie and Jeff Hill who are members and parishioners here at Christ Church. This is a new ministry that will be offering periodic videos of some of the major services and liturgies that we offer at Christ Church. And today, as our inaugural, we offer to you a video of our St. Francis Blessing of the Animals service, which was held on Sunday, the 1st of October 1st this year. This is an annual event at Christ Church where we honor St. Francis, whose feast day is the 4th of October, by bringing in the good creatures that God has given us to be companions on this earthly journey, and creatures which St. Francis lifted up is in this honoring of the good creation of all of nature uh, and of reminding us of how sacred that creation is to us and how we are called to be good stewards. St. Francis also reminded us that those creatures, those, those dogs and cats and uh, two-legged and no-legged and four-legged creatures that we have been given often incarnate God's love to us in unique and special ways. And I'm sure for those of you who own pets, you know this in a very intimate way. I am very grateful to the Hills for this ministry and for this outreach and please know that we will continue to offer this um, on a regular basis. Hopefully our next presentation will be of All Saints Sunday, which is the 5th of November this year. The videos, when they are produced, will be uploaded to YouTube, uh, and so they will be available there, but we at the church will also link them to our Facebook page. So if you go to Christ Church, comma, Shaker Heights, uh, you can like our page. Uh, if you're a member of Facebook, and if you're not, I suggest you do, because it's a very easy thing, and this will allow you to avail yourself of the service to watch it. Uh, this is both for people who are unable to come to church on a Sunday, who may be homebound, uh, who are maybe institutionalized for one reason or another, and also for people who may be unfamiliar with the church and uh, who would like to safely explore the church from in front of a screen in their homes and uh, put their toes in the water that way. But certainly, we would always invite you to consider coming and joining us. We are a, a community uh, of diverse people of all backgrounds. Uh, we are a very open, welcoming church, a very hospitable church, and we would love to have you be with us some Sunday and get to know us that way. Uh, the videos, when they are done, should be uploaded by the evening of the Sunday of which they are recorded, uh, but we can also put notices out there as well. So uh, if you are uh, able to provide us with your email address, we might text you when those videos go up, and then you can go and enjoy them. As I said to you, this uh, video is of St. Francis. Uh, I am the celebrant in this service, and our preacher is the Reverend Megan Froelich, who is a, a priest associate here and also a member of uh, the presiding bishop um, staff in New York City. And Megan is a wonderful preacher, and I know that her good words based on the scripture readings for St. Francis will, will move, move you, as will hopefully seeing the blessing of the animals and the children and the young of heart come forward with their, with their blessed pets. At any time, if you would like to contact us, uh, you can do so through our website, uh, cometochristchurch.org, or you may reach me at my email, priest at cometochristchurch.org, or you may even call us here at area code 216-991-3432. Blessings to you, thank you for being with us, and know that Christ loves you in ways beyond measure, and that you are always welcome here to know Christ church and Christ's love in new ways. Blessings to you all.
morning. And you are welcome here on this beautiful autumn morning and for the celebration of St. Francis and the blessing of the animals. I do encourage you uh, to uh, just be a little bit more relaxed this morning during our liturgy with some of our favorite pets with us. And also know that should you need, there is a table in the narthex with um, some handy wipes and some cleanup material just in case. We continue our liturgy on page three. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ be in our hearing, Christ be in our speaking, Christ be light in our darkness, Christ be our all in all. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do a quick sound check. Jeff, how are we? Are we good? Okay. Well, we have such an honor this morning to celebrate the Feast of St. Francis. Oh my goodness. And I can't tell you what a thrill it is for me personally to see little tags, tails wagging out of the pews, and little noses, and all kinds of collars rattling and tags, and it's just fabulous. Because we know that we, as human beings, are not the only people on the planet. <gasps> no, really? I know that's a surprise for so many of us. I have to tell you to start with a little story about my, my former dog, Murphy. He was a border collie and was part of my pastoral care team when I was the rector in Akron. And he often went, by request, to visits with me uh, at the nursing home for our parishioners who were there. And Miss Betty, as usual, I was scheduled to visit her and bring her communion, as I always did. And it was one of those hot, hot, hot summer days in the 90s, crazy humidity. And I had had a few meetings beforehand outside, so I couldn't have the dog with me in the car because he would have gotten way too hot and that would have been you know, not good for him. So I show up to the nursing home and I go to Betty's room and I greet her and I say, Miss Betty, I have brought communion. And she says, the sacraments are lovely, dear, but where's the dog? <laughs> the sacraments are lovely, dear, but where's the dog? And so often we have found that in our own lives, haven't we? Where's the dog? Where's the cat? Where's the bird? Where's the snake? Where's the lizard? Where is the person who is my extra little companion who looks at me the way that I wish the rest of the world did. You know that little, um, little cross-stitch saying that says, I wish I was the person my dog thinks I am, or my cat, or you know, fill in the blank for your favorite pet. I wish I was that person, because they look at you, hi, Jessie. Yes, hi. There she is in the back. Um, one of my favorite golden retrievers. All of them are favorites. And you know, we wish we could, we could be that person all the time. But we also know we aren't. And we also know that God sees us in a very different way than we see ourselves. St. Francis started his life not as a saint, as many of us are still in a work in progress. And he engage the question that we engage so much. How do we draw closer to God? How do we become more aware of God's work in our lives? And if God feels distant, I know in my head it's not because God is far away. God isn't. There is no place that I can be that God is not. I'm, I, I get that in my head. But I don't know about you, sometimes I feel like God is far away, and that's my awareness of God, right? You know, I just feel like it's not, it's not coming together that day for me. And St. Francis had some of those days also, and he found in his spirituality, as he is drawing closer to God, that as he let go of material possessions, he was able to more closely walk with God. And this morning, as I zoomed out the door and 38 degrees, I thought the possession I really want is my gloves. <laughs> but that's not what he was talking about. He's not talking about basics. He's talking about the things that we burden ourselves with, the possessions, the stuff. 
the arguments, even, <laughs> that we burden ourselves with. Thank you for the help. I appreciate that. We get a little call and response going with the dogs. I love it. I love it. Hi, poppies. Hi, darlings. So we, we burden ourselves with, with physical possessions and also with spiritual um, heaviness. And it may be an argument. It may be a grudge that we carry. It may be a hardening of heart that we have not yet let melt into forgiveness and love. It may be a worry. I'm really good at that one. Anybody else good at worrying? Yeah, yeah, we got a whole congregation of warriors. Oh, do not point at your wife, Mr. Landini. <laughs> you are pointing at her. Yeah. So, and we know these, these worries are all in God's hands, and yet I, I feel like I have to hang on to it. I have to, I have to hang on to it. And that makes it weighed down and burdensome. Many summers ago, I was traveling in England and I was feeling kind of sassy because I had packed so light for that six week trip. I just had a little kind of a, a backpack suitcase and I was feeling really good about not needing to ask for help or this, that or the other. And there we, I was, me and my little suitcase. And I ended up on the train station platform in Darlington with a Franciscan friar. And, you know, they look like they're just like monks in the brown robe. And, the, and, and so I, I struck up a conversation with him. And, um, darling man, yokes are often shared. And they also distribute the weight in a whole different way. Have you ever tried to carry two really heavy buckets without something to help with on your shoulders? They're a lot heavier just by hand than with that help. And again, reminding us that we have, we have help when we have yokes. We have a lot of help, those who are present with us and those who have gone before with us. Oh, and we've got somebody loose who's going to the columbarium. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> we have the saints who have gone ahead, and we have those who are right with us. I also wonder in our day and age if this text, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, Oh, she's so sweet. Bring her, here. Bring her here for a second. Come here. Come on. Oh, yes. Our very, very mostest, favoritest three-legged dog in the whole wide world. Yeah, she's so sweet. Yes, you are so sweet to come today. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you ever wonder what God looks like, dog spelled backwards. <laughs> Yes. Oh, she's so sweet. Thank you, Mark. I love on her later. She had to go to the bathroom when I told her she had to go outside. It's that way, not <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they are so darling. So I wonder with our text today, those who are carrying heavy burdens and feeling weighed down, come to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is late. I wonder, I wonder if Jesus was also thinking that the burden for the earth is heavy right now when we read these texts in our day and age that the burden that we put on the earth is very very heavy what we do on our daily habits what we do as a society what we do as consumers doesn't take into account that we really all are people on the planet i have a 90 year old oak outside my house on the tree lawn area and I talk to it all the time. It's huge. You cannot get your arms around it. And I talk to it just about every day when I'm home. And I've asked it to tell me the stories of the earth from the last 90 years. And the wind rustles when it still has leaves. And the snow usually plops on my head when there's a wind in the winter. And we get the beautiful new green in the spring and the full leaf canopy all up and down the street in the summer. And these annual cycles for at least 90 years in the life of this tree tell of great change for the earth in the last 90 years. Peter's posted a wonderful article, I believe it's from the New York Times, on our board talking about climate change. 
and talking about some of the things we can do about it. And we at Christ Church, I think, are as aware as many of what we can do. Francis wrote beautiful poetry and prayers about Brother Sun and Sister Moon and about all of creation. And we honor him today not just with blessing our pets who remind us of God's unconditional love, but we also honor him today by recommitting even more deeply to the care of the earth, the care of this planet who gives us life, the care of the wind and the waves, and all of the things that are happening. It's not a coincidence that our sisters and brothers in Puerto Rico are so affected. We've had something to do with that. So I invite us today to even more deeply commit ourselves to the kind of love that shows forth in action, that makes itself alive in what we do and in what we don't do. If you don't have a great recyclable water, recycled water bottle, pick one up, the Vestry Selenum. They're wonderfully, beautifully designed. If you need a hand with figuring out other ways that you can do that, Linda, stand up for me for a minute. Linda Bernays is one of our wonderful eco-justice warriors along with many others. Thank you, Linda. And, you know, just little things that we've done and we continue to do throughout our lives. Keep doing them. The earth needs it. God needs our help to do it. And we're reminded when we look at the, the wonderful eyes and ears and tails and wags of our furry friends, that being in that moment is an awareness of God's presence. Be aware, and from that awareness, take action. May be blessed today by your pet or someone else's, or the memory of one, and may we all be blessed by the companionship of our wonderful saint. Woof. Amen. <laughs> Amen. As you are able, please rise. And turn to page 8 of the bulletin, join me in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of God, God of God, right of God, through God, through God, through God. Through God. Through God. Through God.
God that they profess. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples who claim God as their God, for our Jewish and Islamic brothers and sisters, that they may be at peace with us and rejoice with us to do their Father's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this country, that our unity might be strengthened by genuine commitment to God's will and by faithful obedience to God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For traitors and prostitutes, for drug peddlers and con artists, for all who live in the underworld of our nation or outside the pale of respectability, that they may continue to be the special object of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For people throughout the world who are suffering at this very hour from drought and famine, from economic distress and social disruption, from violence and war, especially these United States, particularly the states and territories hit by hurricanes, tropical storms, and fires. And we pray also for Afghanistan, the Caribbean islands, England, Haiti, Iraq, Israel, Mexico, Palestine, South Sudan, Spain, Syria, Venezuela, and Yemen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our God. For our own community, especially for James, Wynn, Pat, Jack, Dolores and Pernell, Bertie, Pat, Cassandra, Helen, Ellen, Mark, Leopoldo, Charlie, Ray, Matthew, and Sushita, that they may be healed in their distress. For ourselves, that we may have the grace to rejoice with those who rejoice, especially those having birthdays this week, Ben Reynolds, Dana Biggerman, Ken Gable, and John Shelley, and that we might be delivered from all illusion of superiority, from all pretense of righteousness, from all arrogance and hardness of heart, and that we might know the meaning of compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. I invite your additional thanks and intercessions. Peace of Jesus be with you always, my friend. Amen.
Christians. We were re-energized to get this project going. And we had our first one um, two weeks ago on Thursday. And the plan is to continue it every other Thursday at 7 p.m. at uh, the Phoenix Coffee House in Lee. It's geared towards younger professionals, but anyone's welcome. There's really no preparation involved. We're going to be reading um, the gospel for the next um, for the next week, so it serves as a nice primer. Um, and come join us for fellowship and um, reading and some caffeine. And if uh, the gospel reading suits us, like the wedding in Cana, we might grab some wine at the wine spot. <laughs>
Paul's have offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. When he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify by your Holy Spirit, to be your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has caused, we are bold to say, Our Father,
give you thanks.